I'm sure this doesn't come as a surprise to you, but there is a number of different garden chemicals that you use every day in your garden that are dangerous to human health. And while they may be banned in most countries, they're most definitely not banned in the US, Australia, and Canada. So today's video, we're gonna look at exactly what those products are and how you can navigate around them. If you do not know who I am, my name is Ashley and I have a degree in soil science. So I feel like I'm kind of qualified to talk about the world of plant and soil science. and. When it comes to any sort of pesticide, it definitely affects plants as much as it affects soil. So the motto here is garden with science. So if you choose that you want to use any of these products still, completely up to you, no shame, don't care. I'm just giving you knowledge. Okay, so you're probably wondering, I love you too, thank you. Now stay over there. Now the reason why it's not banned in Canada, US and Australia, those those three tend to be like the big uh, bad guys that just, yeah. Anyways, the reason why they're not banned is because they look at things based on dosages. And if the instructions read to only add so much and FDA or Agriculture or Agri-Foods Canada has deemed that said dosing is not dangerous, it's approved for retail use, if you will. Now, I don't know how often you read the instructions and apply exactly what you're supposed to apply, or if you shake the bottle every time to make sure it's homogenous mixture and everything's mixed together appropriately, or even if you trust your neighbors and surrounding area to properly apply this stuff. Needless to say, it's very likely that the dosing that FDA and Agriculture Agri-Foods Canada thinks we're applying is not what is actually in our environment. And this doesn't just include synthetics. There are organic compounds out there that will have these products in it. Because remember, it doesn't matter if it's synthetic, it doesn't matter if it's organic, it's the dosing. There are organic compounds out there when dosed too high are deadly or just a, a slow neurotoxin that <laughs> yeah, doesn't feel too great after a few years of use. I can give you the names and name brands of products that contain these active ingredients, but that's not nearly as valuable as me giving you the names of the active ingredients so that when the companies just simply change the branding or change the name to try to sucker you in again, you, as a garden scientist, can uh, read the label and make sure you're not killing you and your family. The other reason why I'm not naming names is because I don't want to get sued or end up in some jail somewhere or just poof, gone. Redheads are already going extinct. I don't need to add. Okay, elephant in the room, glyphosate. Let's just get this one out of the way. Glyphosate, we know, is banned in a number of different countries, particularly countries in Europe, and is most definitely not banned in Canada, US, and Australia. Now, the reasons for the ban aren't really based in known problems, if you will. They are based on the fact that there is a lot of active lawsuits currently going on in regards to glyphosate and cancer in humans. So that is why these countries acted on this. Conspiracy theory hat on is that I do think that glyphosate purposefully or not purposefully is distracting from some very big issues or much more dangerous products that are on the market that you use sometimes even more commonly than what you would be using glyphosate for. Now, I'm not going to detract from the fact that glyphosate is found in people's urine. Around 80% of people's urine has glyphosate remnants in it, so it is very obvious that it may be an issue and that it's most definitely getting into our system. Uh, so I won't detract from that, but what I will say is that there's a lot scarier stuff out there. Okay, first one is neonicotinoids. I'll just put the name here. A lot of these, I'm just not even gonna try to pronounce. Anyways, this one is probably one of the most controversial because Canada actually reversed their ban on this one uh, a few years back. Now this is a family or a grouping of insecticides 
and insecticides you will learn very quickly are the most insidious ones that you definitely don't want to apply. Anyways, so it's a grouping of them. There's three kind of main ones that we see very commonly in everyday products and for agricultural use. Okay, so the main reason it came under scrutiny and the main reason that actually Canada looked at even getting rid of this stuff is because the effect it had on pollinators. But there was very little discussion on what effects it had on humans. Despite the fact that, and I quote, a systematic review of publicly available literature on unintentional human exposures to neonics, abbreviation for that ridiculous word, reported a link between developing heart and brain, as well as cluster symptoms, including memory loss and finger tremors. And this was from 2021. So what a systemic review means is that this individual, Kimino, Kim, Kimino, whatever, um, et al, looked at a grouping or a large body of literature referencing these chemicals and their exposure to humans and kind of overall what very common themes were. So those are the common themes that they found caused malformations in your heart and it caused tremors as well as fatigue. So great reason to stay away from this. Now other research actually pointed towards more neurological issues outside of the tremors in fingers. So overall, muscle tremors were noted. Lower levels of testosterone. Now these two I find really interesting. There was changes in our regulation of insulin as well as changes in fat metabolism when exposed to these neonics. So all these things are less than ideal and reasons why you should stay away from this product. Okay, so the next one is Mancozeb. So this is a fungicide and they are considered powders generally. So they're either wettable or unwettable powders is generally the form that these come in. It turns out this is full of endocrine disruptors and endocrine systems are simply your hormones. So this can include estrogen, testosterone, you name it. It's in there. Cortisol, all of them. It was also classified as toxic for reproduction, which seems like it, that's everything at this point. But but Canada, you are in luck. As of 2023, it has been banned for use in very specific situations, such as the following crops, carrots, peas, celery, watermelons, lettuce, wheat, lentils, ornamental plants, and alfalfa grown from seed. Not allowed anymore. Everything else is for game. And now these are the uses that it also has to be stopped use in. Uh, seed treatments, it's often found in that, in the greenhouse, in the forestry industry, or with the use of handheld equipment. So application processes that are done by hand and not by machine. So next up is carabaril, car, car barrel, car barrel, whatever, this one, insecticides. So this one is an insecticide and it's been banned from residential use. Okay, so this is a cholinesterase inhibitor, and this is a family of enzymes that is present in the central nervous system, particularly in nervous tissue, muscles, red, red blood cells, and is the catalyst for hydrolysis of neurotransmitters lists a whole bunch of them and the reactions that allow all of this to happen. Meaning it obviously affects your, your neural systems like a lot of these insecticides do. And furthermore, it's known to be toxic to human health, which is why they banned it for residential use. Why they haven't banned it on agricultural scales comes down to the fact that they think that they listen to instructions better than those of the residential areas. Now I'm not gonna take away from the fact that there's very responsible farmers out there but it is just like slightly concerning still. So. Okay, the next one is lahide. Metallahide, metallahide. This is slugs and snails and it's organic compounds. Hmm. I love when it's an organic compound. Those are my favorite. But overexposure can cause irritability. So I think there's most definitely folks in my life that have been 
snorting lines of this stuff. I'm joking. Sleepiness, fever, muscle twitching, convulsions, coma, and death. So that's great. I'm laughing because like at this point, that's literally all you can do. Okay, Spinotram is the next one. And this is actually two neurotoxins put together to make an insecticide. Or sorry, neurotoxic constituents put together to make a pesticide. Now, don't worry. It's low acute toxicity uh, via oral and inhalation routes of exposure. So the good news, it's acute toxicity category four. So not a big deal, not a big deal. It's just slightly toxic. Kind of like arsenic is, you know, slightly toxic. Next one is beta cyflufurin. Cyflufurin. It's an insecticide. As you may have guessed, they all seem to be that. And it is a parenthroid insecticide, which is a group of insecticides. It has low aqueous solubility. It's semi-volatile and cannot be expected to leach into groundwater, which is great, right? That just means like when you apply it, she's staying in. She's not paying rent, but she's sticking around for a while. It's highly toxic to mammals. It may be a neurotoxin, we're not entirely sure. Highly toxic to fish and inverte invertebrates, but it's far less toxic to humans. Like, I, I wish that was just my scripting speaking there and it wasn't me, like, reading off of actual literature. That's, like, ugh, in and of itself. Anyways, if you want to learn more about dumb things you can buy for your garden or do for your garden, you're going to check out this video right here. And if you want to know what Google is watching you for, because this feels like a conspiracy theory video, you need to check out this one here. That is a blue jay. Very angry blue jay.